Hey everyone, Zach from thebarbellphysio.com. And today we're talking about testosterone replacement therapy and tendinopathies. So testosterone replacement therapy prescription has exploded in recent years, where it used to be a bit more of a taboo thing to talk about. You now hear people in the health and fitness world talking about this regularly. Alongside this increase in prescription of TRT, I have noticed in my clinical practice as a physical therapist that men on TRTs seem to get tendinopathies a little bit more frequently than men that aren't on TRT. And so I dove into the research to try to understand what might be happening here. And I want to share a little bit of that research with you. We're going to first start by talking about this research study titled testosterone dose response relationships in healthy young men. So this was a really cool research study where they took men and they put them on different levels of testosterone replacement therapy for six months. So as low as 25 milligrams a week, they then went 50 milligrams for another group, 125, 300, and all the way up to 600 milligrams of weekly testosterone. Now, before we go further, I do want to state here that 600 milligrams of testosterone on a weekly basis, that's not actually a TRT dose. That's more what you'd expect somebody to use from a performance enhancing drug perspective. 300 milligrams a week is also gonna be really high in terms of TRT. Most of the time, when I see men that are on TRT, their doctor has prescribed them somewhere between 100 and 200 milligrams a week, but I do think it's good that they looked at this wide range of dosages here. Another really important note in this research study was that the male participants in this study had previous resistance training experience, but they were asked to not participate in strength training or intense conditioning during the duration of this study. So if they're not training, what we wouldn't expect to see is a lot of increases in muscle mass or muscle strength, but they actually found the opposite. So because these guys were on TRT, they found a dose response relationship. So the higher the dose, the more improvements we saw in fat-free muscle mass, strength and quadriceps muscle volume. So the group that took 125 milligrams of testosterone on a weekly basis, they saw a 3.4 kilogram increase in their fat-free mass. The group that took 300 milligrams a week increased their weight 5.2 kilograms and the 600 milligrams per week saw a 7.9 kilogram increase in their fat-free mass. Now, fat-free mass is not just muscle mass, to be clear, but they also looked at quadricep muscle volume and they found that it increased significantly along with increased dosages, as did leg press strength. So fat-free muscle mass went up, quadricep muscle volume went up and leg press strength went up. So we saw some significant performance advantages in this group. I then went and tried to find any research I could that linked testosterone replacement therapy with tendinopathies. And I didn't actually find any research on that yet, but I did find two really interesting studies on tendon tears. The first study looked at testosterone replacement therapy and found that individuals on TRT had a 3.6 times greater likelihood of sustaining a rotator cuff tear compared to those that weren't on testosterone replacement therapy. Another study found that patients with testosterone use were more than twice as likely to experience a distal biceps tendon injury as opposed to those that aren't on testosterone replacement therapy at all. A distal biceps tendon injury is just gonna be where the bicep inserts into the elbow. Those research studies are showing that individuals on TRT have an increased risk of tearing tendons. Now that doesn't mean that everybody that's on TRT is going to tear a tendon, but I do think we need to appreciate that if those tendons are tearing, it likely means that there was already some degeneration happening in that tendon that probably would have made them more likely to also see tendinopathies or just pain in those tendons preceding those tears. Now in those research studies, they don't exactly provide an answer for why that happens. My hypothesis is kind of twofold. Number one, we saw from the previous study that we saw significant improvements in muscle mass and strength. Simultaneously with that, when guys get on TRT, they get more energy. They're gonna be a little bit more motivated to work out and exercise, so their training volume and intensity are gonna go up. That combination of things is probably gonna result in tendons being more likely to get overloaded and broken down and be in a state of tendinopathy. So when I have clients that are on testosterone replacement therapy, there are three things that I often talk to them about to try to maybe reduce their risk of sustaining a tendinopathy. Now to be clear, these three things are not specifically researched and studied to show that they prevent tendinopathies and definitely they don't show that they prevent tendinopathies on people with TRT. 
I've not found any studies on that at the time of this recording, but I think there's enough research around this that these are fairly safe recommendations to potentially make to clients. Number one is to consider getting on a collagen-derived protein. So this is kind of early in research here, but the research is pointing more and more towards taking a collagen protein for individuals dealing with an active tendinopathy does seem to improve the structure of those tendons a little bit, as well as their clinical outcomes. So this 2022 systematic review is a great read if you wanna dive a little bit deeper into that, but I often recommend that my patients jump onto something like Bub's Collagen Protein and take that just daily with their coffee as part of their tendinopathy rehab, or if they want to do something to potentially stay ahead of it. Then for my athletes that are on TRT, the second thing that I like to do is I often encourage them to perform slower tempo at times in their training. So one big staple of tendinopathy rehab is heavy, slow resistance training, where we're doing really slow movements with them. And I think that because that's good for rehabbing tendons, I think it could also potentially be really good for us in terms of prehabbing those tendons or staying ahead of things. Now, don't mishear me. This doesn't mean that I'm taking every single exercise that we're doing and performing them at slow tempo, but I'll often kind of cycle through on a month by month basis. So month one, maybe we slow down all of our squat tempo. Month two, we do that for our bench press volume. Month three, we do that for our hinging volume, but we just kind of cycle through different months of slowing down tempo on specific movement patterns as a way to potentially get a different training effect on those tendons. And then finally, the third thing that I like to do is something that's been a staple in the powerlifting world for years, and that is high rep band finishers. So if you look at like the West Side Barbell writings or videos and, and listen to Louis Simmons, they talk all the time about high rep band finishers where you're doing movements like tricep pushdowns and leg curls and leg extensions with bands with really fast tempo. And they talk about how that's gonna improve tendon health, it's gonna help with recovery. I really think what's happening when we do that is that fast elastic motion of going through these rapid high rep band finishers does a great job of training those tendons to be a little bit stiffer which is the tendon's role, is to transmit force from the muscle into the bone. And so when we increase that stiffness a little bit, I think we're gonna have a slightly healthier tendon. And so I kind of do this the opposite of what I do with the tempo. So let's say I have a month where I'm doing slow tempo on my squat work. Well, during that month, maybe once or twice a week, my athletes are finishing their workout with some high rep leg curls. We train the opposite side of things. And then the next month we reverse that. So it's slow tempo on our hip hinging movements, but fast tempo high rep band finishers for something like a leg extension. So think collagen protein, think slowing down tempo at times and think high rep band finishers. I hope that gives you some ideas. If you're an athlete that's on TRT dealing with tendinopathies, I've got articles on my website that you can check out to help you understand that rehab process a little bit more. But if you just wanna stay ahead of this yourself or with your clients, there are three different strategies that you could potentially use for athletes that are on TRT.